Jet Surf Cruiser DFI unboxed. Okay, we've got the lid off and uh, here we go. So, of course, wheels for your, uh, your bag. Ideal to slide it in the back of the bag. Airports, you know, running along pavement, that stuff. They're always in the boxes. Of course then, Jet Surf Stand. Everyone's seen them enough now to know what they're all about. And then, let's get the bubble wrap open. Just like Christmas again. <laughs> we love unpacking these things. These are, these are good fun. All right, zip her out. All right, drum roll, woohoo! Boom, check that puppy out. Uh, the, these are really, really good tools. Uh, anyway, what I'll do, uh, we'll get this out of the box and um, yeah, we'll go through the features and benefits. All right, we whipped it out of the box, got it on the stand and uh, let's start from the front. So obviously, Jet Surf have their tool kit. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned how nicely they're packaged as far as they're designed to strap onto the two handles and around the snorkel as well. So really good setup. So we'll just unstrap that. That holds the handle. Little clip in there. And then, boom, we have the tool kit. Okay, let's get in here and see what we got. So in the tool kit, we'll start from here. We have obviously all our fins and brackets. So SVS fin bag, two side fins, and then of course your big center fin. And then in here is your bracket. And the idea with the bracket is, and again showing Jet Surf's quality, comes in a nice little bag. The bracket bolts up underneath and holds your, your main fin. So that's what that's all about. So that's all in there. So I'll slide all that back into there. Back into the bag. Cool, then from there. So in here we have your charger, which has all the attachments. And of course, Jet Surf being Jet Surf, they sent us an Aussie plug, which is fabulous. So that sits in there. All your instructions for a charger in there as well, as you can see. Then from there, you have your two lanyards. Two black ones, medium size. There are different size lanyards, so if you're interested in a different size, say for myself, I have a bigger wrist, I use a bigger one, or you've got children with a smaller wrist, you can buy different sizes of those, but they're the two standard ones that come in the kit. Spark plug spanner, pretty standard stuff. Uh, that's your spanner to, oh, stuck in the bag, that's your spanner to put the fin bracket on. Then, it's a little different in here compared to the other boards. Because the new um, cruiser models have the uh, Gardena style snap-on fitting in the rear, which I'll have a look at shortly, it comes with a hose fitting. Really cool. Spare uh, spark plug. And then in here will be your throttle limiter, which goes into the handle here, screws in. And the further you screw down, the less it'll limit the throttle. So that's what that's all about. So that's in there too. And then this one here, just is full of spare parts. So just to get a bit of an idea, you have uh, a spare cord and screws and O-rings, uh, cable ties, that sort of stuff, and a spark tester, which I don't think you'll ever use. I don't know why they put them in. That's an old school jet surf thing, the spark testers. But uh, that's the toolkit. So that'll give you a start with that. All right, cool. We'll fold that up and get that out of the way. Okay, let's have a little look under the bonnet here. Uh, we'll get this cover off, and this is where there's some, some really significant changes. So first thing you'll notice here under the cover is your soundproofing. That's designed to keep the noise from coming up towards the rider and obviously keep the noise from coming out of the engine compartment. So then from there, as far as soundproofing is concerned, you'll see the exhaust system is wrapped. So that uh, stops any sound resonance coming out from the exhaust. Uh, other changes under here um, will be obviously the new oiling system they have. So now we have an alternator and also we have the normal bearing at the back. So with the alternator, uh, it needs to be lubricated as well. So with the new system, they have a single tube that runs to the alternator as well as the bearing housing. In the previous models, they had a tube to the alternator and one of the bearing housing. So that's an upgrade there. The other upgrade you'll see is if you look at the plumbing, especially if you look under there, uh, they change the plumbing in the back, basically to try and prevent water getting into the engine. 
uh, the idea behind this is the uh, suction build system that they've got in the rear of the board has been changed and they've got a different system in there where the plumbing is basically rearranged so that the water doesn't run back in and it, uh, it, it won't siphon as it's sitting. So basically you can let them sit in water for longer periods of time, so, which is great. So um, yeah, that seems to be under the bonnet. Uh, the only other extra, this is obviously my board we're having a look under here, is my um, filter sock. Uh, it's specifically designed for surf riding, uh, stopping any extra splash getting down the intake, and uh, that prevents, you know, if you have a big spill and, you, and you've got a, uh, a quantity of water in the board there, that stops it splashing down into the sock. Um, and as I say to people, if you've got enough water in there to get that into that sock, you're in trouble anyway. So uh, <laughs> they work really, really well. Uh, I put them on all my boards. So anyway, that's the engine compartment. Um, I guess the only other thing I should mention is it's, it's your standard 100cc engine. Uh, it's the cylinder which you'll see on the race and the adventure. Uh, the titanium cylinder and exhaust system is obviously different from this, but fundamentally the engine is the same. So yeah, very, very cool. Okay, here we are at the back of the board. Quite a few changes compared to the previous board, so uh, we'll, uh, I'll have a quick look at what's going on here. So first thing is, obviously, um, Jet Surf have their ride plate cover. A uh, little protector, protect the, the sharp edge of the board and stops cutting the bag as well. So I get that out of the way. So first thing you'll see is obviously the silencer, which we've seen before, but I notice now that I have a nice little rubber coating on it, so I've upgraded those as well. So we talked about the soundproofing in the board, so there's soundproofing in the cover, there's soundproofing around the exhaust chamber. Uh, there's also a muffler, or a, uh, I guess, yeah, I guess you'd call it a muffler, a bit like a motocross bike, in the rear, which you can't see. And then what they do then, pipe the, uh, the sound down through, and the exhaust gas is down through the normal um, silencer that you have. You'll notice here, see this rubber here? Rubber here, and it's all around the back of the board. It protects the, the, the back of the ride plate against uh, I guess uh, vibration and sound coming from the engine. So the exhaust actually exits the board just through this sort of slot at the bottom, uh, which allows the board to uh, breathe properly, but also be a little bit quieter as well. So that's a really, really great idea. So uh, that makes a big difference to this board. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is the flusher, which is fantastic they've done this. So the flusher setup uh, should have been like this a long time ago. They give you the little fitting, which we call a guardian, a fitting in Australia, which simply snaps on, garden hose comes off the back. Do your normal flush, you know, three to five minutes of flushing, and then just remove it again. Really simple. Um, you can still flush it through the old hook system if you like, but we find that that, uh, that works 100% better than it used to be. So uh, that's the back end. We'll, uh, we'll flip it over and have a look underneath. Okay, here we are underneath. So basically what you see is the underneath of a titanium board. Um, the best handling board on the market by far, uh, without a doubt. So uh, the first thing you'll notice is the, the fin boxes. So to give you a bit of an idea what that's all about, obviously you've got your, your SVS fins, which are your normal snap-in style fins, which you, you push into place, and then snap into position like that. So where these fins are located on the board is very particular the way the board handles. So. JetSurf have a range of different fin boxes that are suitable for titanium than now the cruiser model boards. Um, so you can adjust the fin at different angles, forward, backward, whatever suits your style. Now, I think JetSurf have got it pretty right. Um, the ones they supply are standard, and as you can see, they have a number on each of them, which, which means something as far as the fin replace, uh, that's, that means something as far as the fin placement goes is they've got it pretty much in the right place. It's further back, it's closer to the center fin, which allows the board to turn more sharply. If the fin was further forward, the distance between these two fins is further apart, the boards tend to turn more slowly. So I find for the surf riding, and this is where this board really excels, um, is the best spot. So um, try that first, and if you want to make some changes down the track, by all means, you can change your fin boxes over, which is cool. So we'll just whip that out. So you just pull that out as you do. So uh, then from there, obviously, your center fin, talking fins, we'll stick that in there so it doesn't slide around. Your fin bracket comes in the nice little bag, as we've seen. Basically, bolts under there. We won't do that now. You've seen that before. And then, of course, then your center fin slides into position and then locks down like that. And that's the center fin. Piece of cake. Uh, obviously, the fin on the other side works the same. 
But the really cool thing about this new board is it's actually designed to take uh, the little winglet or foil, which um, it's designed as a wing to help push water into that jet pump cavity in rough conditions. So back in my old jet ski racing days, we used to have things called top loader intake grates, which were a similar arrangement where we had a grate in there that prevented garbage getting into the jet pumps, but we'd put a little winglet in it. And the idea with a winglet would throw water into the top half of the jet pump. So you can just imagine if you're zipping along the water, it's rough. Water's basically just going in the, the bottom half of the jet pump there, and the, the impeller isn't loaded with water properly. So what they do is put a second fin in it, so the water catching here actually gets thrown right down deep into the impeller. So you've got water coming off the winglet, you've got water coming off the, uh, the intake there, filling the jet pump cavity with water. And with the jet pump cavity completely full of water, the board drives so much harder and it gets better hookup, creates better vacuum through here so the board stays more locked to the water and driving. So these little winglets are brilliant and uh, I haven't got one here in my hand so I'll, uh, I'll put a little picky of that on uh, in a second so you can have a quick look at that. So that's what they're all about there. Uh, then from there you'll notice this, which I thought was really odd when I first saw my board. That's actually an anode for the alternator. So the idea is to dissipate any uh, electrolysis or uh, wood could be created by the generator or alternator, let's say. So that's what that's all about. And then of course you've got your nice jet surf symbol at the front there. But all in all, fabulously put together board. One thing uh, I just can't uh, say enough about with uh, jet surf is the, the quality of the boards. You know, uh, once I crack one of these out of the box and I do this on a regular basis, it uh, amazes me every time how the boards look so amazing and the quality of the build. You know, the carbon fiber work there is magnificent. The way the boards fit together, the extras that they put on board, like the, uh, the tool bags and the little cases that cover things up and the fin cases and everything that goes together, even, even the bag is well thought out. So when you're looking at buying one of these, you know, they are an expensive item, especially here in Australia. The Aussie dollar isn't too, uh, too good these days. But what you're buying is something of extreme quality and something that is going to last and it's got fantastic resale value. There's not a lot of these around and so if someone's looking for one, uh, and especially if it's a good late model, DFI model, the resale is really good. So one thing I can't uh, talk about enough is the quality of JetSurf. And uh, in the back end, the support of me as a, uh, the Australian and New Zealand distributor, if uh, there's a problem, they just fix it. No questions asked. And, uh, and I obviously uh, uh, back that up with my customers here in Australia. So excellent quality uh, and I can see value for money in it. And also you'll find too, the feedback I get from my customers, you know, when they purchase one of these boards and they, they come here to the, the showroom or I'll, I'll send it to their home, they unpack it. And one thing they do say is, is Rod, yes, you're right, the quality is amazing. And uh, they feel more comfortable in their purchase when they see how well built they are and uh, how beautifully presented they are. So, yep, good quality stuff and uh, good on your jet set. So, Cruiser DFI, so what's it good for? So basically the Cruiser DFI uh, is, I guess, the most versatile board they have in the market. It's got something for everybody in the sense that a race style hull with a titanium underneath, which means it handles fantastically. It's got dual binding so anyone can jump on whether they're goofy or natural. It's got the adjustable handle on it so you can adjust it to any height person, whether you know, tall guys or, or, or shorter ladies. And the silencing system keeps it quiet. The new, um, I guess, vacuum system for the drain stops water getting in, so you can sit it in the water for long periods of time. And what I find from the actual practical use of the board, it's a fabulous surf. I, uh, I've been surfing with jet skis and, and obviously now motorized surfboards for many years in the surf. And even an old fellow like me can really carve it up on one of these boards. They're absolutely fantastic. And uh, I've done one up upgrade to my board. Other than that, it's completely standard. And this is my board behind. I've gone ahead and I've put a set of titanium bindings with the um, carbon fiber swivel bases on it. So basically what you have is the heel up binding, ratchet top and the swivel base. And that way I can adjust the, the footing on the board to suit my style. And uh, obviously then, with the ratchet bindings, lock my feet in a little bit tighter, and that way I can do eh, just a bit of stuff without falling off. And then of course then, I've made a small little attachment to the back for my uh, leg rope. So if there's big surf, I'll put a leg rope on. There's nothing worse than uh, the board hanging up the beach and you're still out in the way. So that's it. So anyway, uh, they come in two colors. This one is the red, and they also come in a gray. 
Um, color choices are nice. Uh, these are now two, the 2024 models, so the latest and greatest. Uh, we're going to have limited stock, guys. Uh, more coming later in the season, but uh, if you're interested, uh, I've got some available ready to go right now. So anyway, appreciate it, guys. Please subscribe to my channel. Uh, it'll motivate me to do more and more of these videos. I quite enjoy it. Uh, the feedback I get from my, uh, my customers and subscribers is great. So please uh, subscribe and uh, watch the channel next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.